The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father has sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. They teach us in the seminary that when we're preaching, it's really good to be able to read people's faces. It's going to be a little more difficult today for my first time. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for your prayers yesterday uh, for my ordination at the cathedral. Uh, I'm just really sorry that more people would, were not able to join, uh, but I'm very thankful that my family from Ohio was able to be there, as well as Father Hathaway. And I know so many other people were joining in on the live stream and are right now joining in on this live stream mass, uh, lots of family in, in Ohio watching this. So very grateful for all of your prayers uh, leading up to this moment. And I ask you to continue to pray for me uh, as I uh, prepare for ordination next year to the priesthood. Well, as any good mom loves to do, my mom loves to tell embarrassing stories about me. Maybe you can relate. Or maybe you're that mom. There's one story in particular that I used to hate when I was a kid. In fact, she actually just told the bishop this story yesterday. So I'll go ahead and share it with you before she does. My parents had taken me to Mass when I was a kid. I was probably about four years old. And my sister was just a baby. And we were sitting in our usual spot in the back of the church, in the last pew. And it was probably about, at about this point in the Mass, the homily, when my parents became distracted by my sister. So I, being maybe a little bit mischievous or curious, took advantage of this opportunity and snuck out of the pew to the back where the, the table was where the gifts were being kept. And I proceeded to take the giant priest host out of the, the ciborium, the vessel, and I'm sure very reverently place it in my mouth. <laughs> it was at this point when my parents realized I was no longer in the pew with them they turned around and they were horrified at what they saw. They, took, they quickly took the unconsecrated host out of my mouth and quietly placed it back, <laughs> teeth marks and all. I'm sure this was the beginning of my vocation to the priesthood, but certainly a, a certain longing for the Eucharist. And today the church celebrates the feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Jesus Christ truly present in the Eucharist. And I think this feast hits closer to home this year as so many of us were unable to participate in the celebration of the Eucharist for so long. 
They say that absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I know many of you have yearned for and longed for the Eucharist during this time. Maybe this time has made us appreciate the Eucharist more. Maybe this is the first week that you have felt comfortable coming back to Mass, and it's the first time you've been able to receive the Eucharist in so long. Or maybe you're still at home watching this on the live stream. Well, as much as we may have been longing to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, Jesus has been longing to be received by us so much more. We just heard Jesus say in today's Gospel, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. God, in all his power and his majesty, desired to come down to us. He initiated it. God desired us so much that he sent his son into the world. And he took on human flesh to pull us out of the darkness of our sin and our misery and to bring us into communion with him. And he does that by giving himself to us in a small white host. If God can make himself into a man and rise from the dead, why can he not give himself to us under the appearance of bread and wine? God desires to live with us and for us to live with him forever in eternity, in heaven. And we can participate in that life right now through the Mass. Pope St. Pius X said that Holy Communion is the shortest and safest way to heaven. Holy Communion is the shortest and safest way to heaven. And we hear that echoed in today's Gospel when Jesus says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. He isn't speaking symbolically here. The bread and wine don't represent his body and blood as mere symbols or nice tokens of remembrance of him. Jesus himself is made present to us through what we only see as bread and wine. You know, there's a strong connection with the, the way that we pray and worship God at Mass and what we believe and thus how we then live our lives. That's why when we enter a Catholic church, we genuflect on a knee to recognize that Jesus is present in the tabernacle. That's why we go to confession before receiving communion if we're aware of committing any grave sin. That's why we usually see here at the Basilica the altar boys holding the paten under our chin or under our hands when we receive communion so as to not drop the host on the floor. Or even the, the priest purifying his fingers after he distributes communion because every little particle of the host is Jesus. And all these practices help us to remember what we believe about the Eucharist. And so we can live our lives Eucharistically. The Catechism teaches us that the Eucharist is the source and the summit of the Christian life. So I really want to invite you to come back this evening, if you can, uh, for after our 5 o'clock Mass. You don't have to come to Mass again, but you can wait outside after Mass for our Eucharistic procession that we'll have down the street to our cemetery and back. And this type of worship is a beautiful witness of our belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. It's interesting to think about what we're doing with all the nice vestments, the canopy, the candles, the incense, the music. Because if the Eucharist is not God, then what we are doing is just worshiping a piece of bread. And that would be idolatry. But because of our belief, because of our faith, because of Jesus' words telling us that he is the living bread, come down from heaven, the bread of angels, we are worshiping the Almighty himself. We don't ask what is the Eucharist, but who is the Eucharist. So today as we come up to receive Holy Communion, the Eucharist, Jesus' body and blood, soul and divinity, we ask God who has yearned for us. 
long for us to receive him and to enter into our hearts. And it's at that special moment, that moment of intimacy with our Lord, that we can tell him anything. Our deepest prayer, our desires, our worries, our hurt. And he can transform them. Transforms them like he transforms the bread and wine and gives us eternal life.